What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. Um, this is episode, I don't know, we are here with Brian Tong. Do you yes. want to, how you doing, bro? Now, man, I'm doing real good. Brian Tong here out in the podcast with Dax Brule and Brian. So <laughs> he sounds exactly like a radio dude. Bro. I am a radio host, <laughs> Have dude. Have you done this? I've definitely done this multiple okay, times. Okay, um, do you want to briefly introduce yourself for the people who might not know you? Everyone probably should know you, but... Uh, oh, no, no. You're I'm, pretty famous in Ottawa, bro. You're featured true. on Ottawa Tourism. That's cute. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes me the full bank guy, huh? <laughs> not even, because okay. my name is Brian Tong. Uh, A.K.A. at What's Good B-Tong, oh. which was a joke. Plug. 16 <laughs> shots in, and I realized that was the funniest name ever, became a corporation. <laughs> and uh, How's that happened? I drank. I just drank. I was like, this is going to be funny. What do we just call ourselves What's Good b What's good, B Tom? You're like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. a great idea. That sounds so much like you, though. Uh, it's that or D's nuts, but whatever works. So, uh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> aside from that, yeah. So, like that that this I profile is actually like an imagery of like who I am. So, I'm I'm a professional dancer, choreographer. Yep. Uh, turn to producer, creative director, everything, and agent. Well, it, it didn't start off like that. It started off as just being a dancer. Yeah, I right? know. It starts yeah, off yeah. somewhere else. Okay, but let, let's go. Let's go to that. Um, quickly, okay. we're gonna share about your backstory so people can kind of know what you're from. So for the later questions, kind of thing. So where did you grow up? Kind of how did you grow up, and how did that shape you into? what you are today kind of thing born and raised in ottawa downtown core vanier straight up uh, down to chinatown uh <laughs> that's actually Respect. the story <laughs> yeah it's not like i have hood credits or anything but yeah. like the people around me had hood credits okay. and when i say that is that i wake up sunday morning i see crime and gang and then i have to process that as like a 13 year old knowing what's going on i saw drug dealing happening in the third grade yep. and then prostitution rings happening approximately fourth or fifth grade and all these things were just too much. And then over time, I, I discovered hip hop down to elementary school. I was kind of like nurtured by a bunch of Italians. So it was always like hustle, hustle, hustle. Oh, really? And then, yeah, that's why that's why everyone around me is almost pretty much Italian. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, this guy's really knows a lot of Italian culture. He's all about that Italian life. But like I lived right next to Little Italy. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So you're right beside the whole Italian culture. Yeah, of Ottawa. It, it took me it took me about five years ago to realize that we were nurtured and surrounded by Italians. So yeah. it was just evident that my best friend, the people I fall for, or like the people I deal with in business, or like okay. just Italian cultured. So here I am. But fast forward, uh, I learned about street dancing out in the. What, How did the, you get into that? Dancing? Canada, Canada. Oh, well, that's just like an encouragement from the parents. They were just like, go dance. They were like, yay, go little child, go ahead and dance. You know but did I you look? see other people doing it first? No, I didn't even it know was what just it was. Like, you were like, let me just fucking do this. I just moved. Yeah. <laughs> he just moved. I just moved and I got free food, right? So, like, as a kid, it's like, you know, positive reinforcement. Uh, okay. But, uh, but like, what, what, what shaped it was actually third grade at a dance battle washroom. Uh, my homie was like, what are you doing? Dance battle washroom? Yeah, well, I uh, sorry. The, we went to the washroom and had a dance battle. I'm so sorry. I'm a little tired. <laughs> and my homie was like, yeah, let's go have a dance battle. And I was like, how, what is this? <laughs> and then he taught me, he's like, this is hip hop. This is what it is. And then no, I, that really? got me. It was straight up like that. Yeah, it was. Because I didn't have a mirror, so yeah. I used the washroom. So I danced by myself. And the funny you thing is, in the bathroom. Yeah, dude, that's some hardcore shit right there. Yeah, we don't even have money, dude. We danced in concrete. Yeah, I know, no, I know. Yeah, I respect it though. But insane. that, like, you know, you had the dedication to just go in the bathroom, not give a fuck what anyone thinks, and just fucking. Yeah, you gotta fucking do what you. Look. It makes you happy. That's yeah. like the simplest thing. Yeah, no, but some <laughs> people don't. But some people don't do it. I know, especially like nowadays. There's plenty of people. All of my friends, they won't do what the fuck they want to do just because like they think it's weird. People would be like, why the fuck are you dancing in the bathroom, you know? Because I, it makes me happy. You can go like, fuck yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's just like, it's a part of society. And I'm glad that you, you didn't let that affect you. Yeah, I mean, like... But I guess gonna, that's part of you also, like, when you're growing up kind of thing. You're just... Do you ever feel like, you know, I got to fucking do what I fucking want kind of thing? Like, did your parents kind of push you towards that? No, it's just like, you survive, you eat, you do well, that's okay, it. Okay, you have a very survival mentality. It's a huge thing. survival mentality. Okay. Let's, let's talk about that then. Um, do you think... You're that adversity when you're growing up is what makes you successful today absolutely yeah yeah after seeing all these things you had to process things and understand how to operate and respond to it it's all based on how you respond yeah 
yeah so like you see someone get shot what do you do not that i have seen it it's yeah. just like it's just like what's your reaction your reaction should be very yeah. logical and clear and concise and like for me seeing like a car crash and almost near death in front of me and like seeing my friends getting beaten up and then seeing like you know police officers like cuffing like i know i have a very dark past i get yeah, it yeah, no, but no, like no, no. but like but uh, it shaped you it shaped you to who you are and then you learn you're like okay what is it that they did that would like you know instigate that kind of reaction yeah and how could i avoid that from the future and then f- whatever hits me i was like i know what to do it's um it's not gonna phase me anymore so absolutely so like the sense of like you know uh resilience is the word i just learned last year from a couple of friends okay is is what helped me got to where i am so when you know a business lose big money uh i'll find a way because money came in one point yeah. money will come back again so if i slept in the streets which i did at one point uh, when you know what there's gonna be a house and family uh, somewhere but you put yourself in that situation so just know that this is just a one time thing so just don't worry about it you're gonna yeah. be survived yeah anyway so I yeah. like that <laughs> yeah so that's that's pretty much it. it's, it's it's pretty much the, the, the uh, being observant and being outside your comfort zone all the time yeah. and then process it from afar do not be indulgent in yeah. it it's not fun to see a knife and get cut by someone and see it yourself in the news okay so just observe it and kind of th- observe and even observe it in the sense of like why do they react like that? Why do they do that? Oh, very psycholo- psychological, psych- psychological standpoint. Yeah. So that's the tips you would give to people because not everyone, like you know, like I'm not saying anyone's luckier or unluckier. Kind oh, of, of course, thing. yeah. Um. Well, you know, like maybe, yeah. True, there are really bad circumstances, but people who have grown up with less adversity, and it's a huge topic nowadays. Is like everyone's soft. Huge. You know what I mean? Everyone's soft. Huge. Like, if you're grown up and you're given everything, like, like if I always use this analogy, like if I let my dog out into the wild like it would die in three days 100 percent. you know what i mean so like do you have any <laughs> tips for people who have grown up in that given more like kind of thing would you say try to put yourself in that um out of comfort zone what's the opposite of comfort zone get out of your comfort zone kind of thing to people out of your box out of your box so you kind of understand here's, more of here's my advice to the new generation i would say just because like how how <laughs> we got do the advice for the new yo, generation I got, I, yo straight the new generation could be someone my age he's actually the best to, the yeah. best uh, role model for me am i really respect i'm just Everyone really needs to know brian tong bro yeah three shots he's in <laughs> i'm joking i'm sober today yeah i i don't drink that often You're drunk I'm just, on sleep bro i'm drunk on sleep <laughs> or, for sure or, that lack right. of sleep <laughs> lack of sleep lack of sleep i didn't even sleep i slept at 4 30 last night working and just like uh but like for the advisor like i would say the new generation now that does not mean year wise it just means mentally uh agreed yeah it's uh are you willing to adapt to the new modern times yeah uh, and with values that are fundamentally pure from time to time to time and time again so yeah. this is the most important thing for those who are willing to jump, jump within the capacity and the bandwidth that you understand. You're about that progressive life. Yeah, hell yes. <laughs> like this top 40 right now is Latin music. That's great. So you're listening to J Balvin, okay? You're listening to, you know, Ali Brooke and all these reggaeton tracks. But if you don't if you don't even know it's called reggaeton, first off, that's the first step to actually educating yourself. Yeah. Getting us out of your box. Okay. Be cultured and observe. It's like, what is this? Why do I like it? And where does it come from? Yeah. Puerto Rico. Okay? So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> be smart about what you what you take in like before you go into something new educate yourself yeah be the smartest person in the room or like near the top near the top well when you say be the smartest room it's almost sense like 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 be the most like confident uh, well calculated risk logical deductive reasoning uh, approach of things so so like you see 20 dudes in a parking lot walk <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, like, okay 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 yeah okay. but like no so for the uh, to summarize basically uh take things that you enjoy or like things that are surround your your sensory and like understand where they are derived from uh from music to whatever to movies it's like okay how did they shoot this how did okay. t- tarantino I shot see where this he's coming from. and then when you do that indulge in it and then you're like wait i love this movie Tarantino produced this movie, but he loves improv. For example, I'm just making this up. He likes improv, and then you look in a newspaper or even a blog or Narcity, and you're like, wait, there's an improv show down the street. 
Yeah, I should really check that. This is like your like this is your first step to actually open up your world to new things. I open myself to every possible thing. I probably say yes to a lot from yeah. burlesque to like strip clubs to like even like eating like Mediterranean food to even eating like bugs. So like I've done it all just because like I need to understand why this is logical for a lot of people. Understand culture. Huge. That's it. That's it. I would say what I think you were trying to get across there is about the rever- reverse engineering is something that you've brought into my head actually recently. Is okay. How you pretty much, how you find where you want to get somewhere, you look at where you want to go and then you reverse engineer it. Yeah. So you want to understand the music, you look at those people and then you figure out how they did it. How did he make that movie? You know, what were the steps involved in a reverse order? And then you understand better how to get to where you want to go kind of thing. Yeah. And I think that's what you were trying to get to. And then to conclude that, don't do it with and behind a computer. That's great for prep work, but okay. start stepping out of your house and be like, oh my gosh, I'm actually going to the improv show. Understand that it. changes everything. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, so this is pretty much a, a like a photography and video podcast. So we're gonna kind of keep it geared towards that. Straight. Um, so I want to ask your thoughts pretty much right now on the creative industry because I think I've talked to you briefly about this and okay. pretty much how do you think everyone's getting into it nowadays everyone's a photographer everyone's a videographer where do you think it's going where do you think you know is there a bunch of fakes do you think everyone is creative like what are your general thoughts if you could kind of do you understand that I do I just <laughs> wait for you to finish <laughs> that I was sentence my sentence is just Sorry, end like on a limb you okay sure go ahead yes <laughs> So I actually do know the answer to that. Because you see it all from above, too. You're the guy who... You're an agent, pretty much, I would say. For, you're am. my agent, technically. Yeah. And you see it from above. You see all these different creators, all these different people. Yeah, that's great. You bring it together. But what do you think about it all? What do you think the future of it is going towards? It's going to be good. It's just because like now there's accessibility. But now it comes down to grit. Like, Do you actually have the grit to actually go through all of it? Yeah. You know, People are, quote unquote, soft. Okay, what does that mean? Sure, you want to be the best photographer, but are you going to learn every damn trick in the book of yeah. photography elements of like graphic design? Do you know anything about editing? Like before you do that, the answer is most likely no because yeah. you can't be everything. Yeah. You got to be the best niche for no, a best person for a specific niche. Yeah. Then yeah, then you will become a great creator. So this is a problem. Anyone could be anything they could think about or they could they want to they be. want to be, sorry. Um <laughs> but they're not willing to put that kind of level of work and, and yeah. sacrifice. When I say sacrifice, sure, you're going to spend 36 hours on one photo that probably only gets 10 likes on Instagram. But what's the point of that? The point is that you have been creatively on another level now. Oh, okay. So, you see it like that? Like 100%. spending that much time is actually worth it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. How do I edit five videos in one hour? Like because I freaking practiced my ass off yeah and now try to compete against me i dare you not because i'll, only, I'll take you on i know <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, am i not i'm not pushing your buttons like, no am i the best of the best no but i'm trying to be like most efficient yeah yeah okay no yeah. everyone has their different styles that's one thing i've seen recently too is there's a lot of different types of editing different things you have to do sometimes yeah. it's worth shooting 1080p because it's a quick video sometimes you really want to fucking shoot 4k 10 bit you know log format because it's got to be a fucking sexy ass video you know sometimes you want to edit it and not worry too much about it sometimes you want to care about every single detail so it really depends what kind of editing you're doing and i think i see where you're going but sorry continue your thoughts no no but go on but, but digress on it. Like, like go ahead like like um what i've okay what i was trying to explain is pretty much like you have to understand also the different situation you're in what you're shooting what you're and then how to optimize that you know what i mean so like you know if you're shooting a very this is what you've said like if you're shooting a a thousand dollar video like or not thousand dollar like a ten thousand dollar expensive video whatever and you know you have to value how much time effort you know speed efficiency quality and a big thing is like you know you're gonna be spending a lot more time on your 4k log footage than your 1080p footage so that's what i mean like it's not about the quality it's about the, the the decisions you're making in the creative process that will affect how much time you take um, based on the price. Do you understand what I mean kind of thing? Yeah, 100% because it takes high value. You don't buy a house because oh, it's kind of a house. It's kind of pretty. No, it's a house because it fits your needs. It yeah. has this room. It yeah. has this floor. So you have to base it on whatever you're shooting. Yeah, whatever, exactly. whatever situation you're in. But going back like like to your question. I because forget. We're, we're I know my questions. <laughs> uh, it's not my first already on a podcast. Uh, what happens Actually, is, how many podcasts have you done? I've already done approximately three and in multiple interviews okay. everywhere. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I just don't publicly post them just because I feel like you like, don't want to be a, you don't want to be sponsoring or no like a sales pitch. Yourself yeah, I want I want you to look at my work, and if you want to have if there's an interview that makes me feel like this is it, then then I would definitely share it. Yeah, yeah, which is why is this part. Po- <laughs> yeah, so it brings back to this whole as- aspect of creative. Anyone could be a creative, but you gotta learn the structure, the foundations of it. You could just dive in. What happens is that I feel like the new generation of people who again it's a mindset thing, not the year thing. Yeah, that you decide to jump. It's like I want to be a creative. That's great. Buying a new camera, new lens, autofocus. That's so hella cute. That's great. You yep. can shoot a nice, pretty photo with a blurry background. That's terrific. But there's no intent. There's no re- you know, reason. And why was this lighting done this way? Why is this edit done this way? Why is this scale done that way? Why is this crop this certain way? So yeah. those- It doesn't have to be a super detailed answer. Like, you could literally just say, oh, I, I cropped it because I don't like the look of that, you know, person in the corner kind of thing. Correct. But you just have to have a reason behind it, not just be like, oh, you know. I'd, so, yeah. <laughs> so you got so to define who you are in terms of a creative. Are you a hobbyist? Yeah. Are you a part-time like okay, yeah. hustler, which yeah. I've talked about in my creative yeah. group? Yeah. So for those of you who don't want to know, like we have a very private uh, creative group that I put on IG, and I don't exactly very private. <laughs> it's very private. It's just uh, we don't really we don't really just accept anyone. So like if you have a hustler and an entrepreneurial mindset, and you're a creative and you're trying to find men's uh, making ends meet, yeah. and trying to quit your full-time trying to find job. Your path. Yeah, this is this is the spot, but you have to kind of prove it. Yeah, yeah, and um, so that being said, so that's where I'm seeing. I'm seeing that these creatives are going to do our hobby, and then they're like, "Yo, I could totally do this for your work." Yeah, and then realize they're gonna get trashed. They're gonna get burned by companies and business. And guess what? That makes it harder for me. Okay. Right? Because like I'm gonna go to, and this happens. Okay, I'm not gonna name the client, but I I go to a client. It's like, how are you able to have the bandwidth to produce the content that we asked for? Because the last company we did was trash yeah i was like oh geez what happened he's like look they just didn't deliver all right and they were new and we trusted them and you're kind of sort of new and i'm not gonna lie on paper i'm new but yeah. my mind is not no so, you but, know you know but lot. but to them what's on paper is on paper Paper's so on paper. that makes it a gazillion times harder for me now i can't ask for twenty five thousand dollars yeah that, because that last group asked 40 for example and then just ruined it and now i'm diluted down to 25 because i'm a test product now yeah so People out there, like, it's okay to charge and whatnot, but you got to be extremely educated and well-informed of the industry. And if you don't know, find someone who's actually making that kind of bank, who actually has that kind of merit and need a second hand and learn from them structurally. It's and that's big. the best way, <laughs> best way to grow your brand because then you're going to do everything right and you're going to learn from the best. Yeah. That's it. Become a practitioner. So when someone asks you a question, you know the answer. Because if you're stuck there and you don't have the... <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's all good. If you don't have the answer, then you're going to be stuck there, you know, hands in your pants, not knowing the fuck to say. Yeah. And you're done. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk quickly about the... <laughs> Something's happening with my throat. It's because you need water. Here's <laughs> agua, bro. It's no, no, I'm good. Vegan. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's vegan. Yeah. Um, about the, the um, hobbyist versus professional. Yeah. So we talked about this, like you asked me a bunch of times, but... Um, do you think people can be ho- do you think everyone wants to be a hobby everyone wants to be a professional do you think some people want to be hobbyist do you think it's okay to be a hobbyist be a professional do you think there's a difference between hobby work and professional work huge both both well, both are, are let me specify different. the question so like yeah one one thing I actually really want to understand is like do you think everyone wants to be a professional yes really because who doesn't want to be paid to do what they love do you think people's changed their mind when they realize how big it is or do you think yep. professionals and hobbyists like there's a fine line of like understanding I don't that, do you think it's fine huh do you think it's fine huge I feel like it's it's not fine like there's like people like you know they do it half part time mixed time you know like oh let me do a shoot here but then you know but that's part time no but like I mean like you know they're like oh I want to be professional but I like hobby you know what I mean like they're in the middle kind of thing part time that's your next step <laughs> no no no, no like, but that's like good. that's like the that's the, the line I mean like that's it's a huge blur of that's, like some people no I swear some people I know some people that. who do it like 
Okay, tell me why. <laughs> this hobby, you shoot anything for yourself makes you happy. No, I think there's people who shoot for themselves and then they go out, they do one shoot and they're like, oh, like, you know, I want to do this part time. And then they do like a month of work and then they like, part -time. Oh, I don't like it anymore. And then now they go back to hobby. No, but then they jump back into it. Like, it's just like a huge mixture of but, like, oh, let me do a shoot here, here, here. But then let me do like a month of work for myself. And it's, it's a drug. Just, so that's what brings back to my point. Like once you dangle money, you're like, oh, but I like it. Oh, but I don't. But I like it. It's a drug. Yeah. Like entrepreneurship and terms of like hustling it's, it's a drug i love it i wake up every that's why i don't really sleep it's like it's my own drug like i'm so excited of the next project really? each time whether it be a relationship whether it be like a dance project or even like business like it's just like anything excites me yeah. i want to see how it progress so like a hobbyist will always go back to part-time not back to hobbyist part-time part that definition is called part-time you're doing it part-time you're not doing it full-time you will always get cash flow in the year in paper if you are getting cash flow partially from a project you are doing it part-time okay so from my definition it's black and white binary one zero yeah so like yeah so you're a part-timer you're trying to get to full-timer yeah. so it's so there's a definite line hobbyist doesn't give a shit and rat's ass whether the client thinks about it. there is like i like this grass i'm gonna shoot the grass and that's gonna make me happy yeah. and i'm gonna put it over saturation even though in my head i have no idea why which is okay because in, as a creator and everyone's a creative oh really ha you think everyone's a creative 100 percent. cooking's creating yeah people don't even think that you know yeah. putting on a shoe a certain way even zipping your coat is a certain art of itself yeah right it's just like everything is creative like this woman walking right here she has a blue raincoat and a beautiful mustard pants and they're actually com like a complimentary like shoe that goes with it this is fashion like like you could say it's like oh it's just like clothing no that's that's full fashion like you could probably see in the video right now like that's actual like that's not a lot of people could dress that well and let's be honest we're in a some of the government city i'm gonna say it straight up but like, you see some fashion <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Let's move on because uh, yeah, we're gonna yeah, <laughs> we were getting sidetracked there. <laughs> you're talking about mustard fans. Well, we were talking about being creative and whether we're yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But we're gonna move yeah. on to the business side of it. Absolutely. Um, I know you've been doing freelance, yeah. not freelance, but like working for yourself. How long has your company been? And then can you give some tips on running your freelance things that you've learned? You know, mistakes you've made that people should fucking avoid at all costs, so they avoid a headache, which you still need to learn. And like your thoughts on that? So there's like three part questions in there, I think. Uh, Let me start so the first hey, one. I should be more specific because I kind of just throw it all at you at once. But yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I just need to answer one thing at a time. Okay, so um, tip. No, we're gonna start with how um, how long have you been doing your business for? Film and photography. Film and fit. We're going. It's all film and photography. When did, which one do you start first? Just talk, give us the whole timeline. I started dancing first. No, before like, no, at, like starting in photography. <laughs> uh, technically speaking, legally, about a year ago. Okay. Legally, let's talk about legally. <laughs> when I say legally, I mean like I actually were registered. you a hobbyist at first? Me, I was a hobbyist because yeah. I did it for myself as a were dancer. Were you just like, oh, I love it? No, I did it because I need it. Okay, there's a difference. So like, what happened is that, like, as a dancer, it was like there's no one that I could trust, and I gave them chances before. They can't, they can't shoot hyperkinetic action. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, but like this is. To me, at the time, mindset was like, well, this is stupidly easy. Why can't you do it? That's like a very negative tonality. I'm just saying that as a joke. It's like, man, you, it's so easy. Well, you can do it. Yeah. And then usually when you have that mindset, you should say, well, shut up and do it yourself kind of thing. And that's something what I would say to myself. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I will. And I took my cell phone and I shot it. And everyone's like, that was the craziest camera ever. It's like, yeah, that's an iPhone SE. Like, it's trash. Yeah. But you thought it was an SLR, which is great because it takes talent to show that. Yeah. So I kept shooting. My brother was like, nah, man, like, you just... I'm gonna buy you a camera and like I owed a lot of my success to my brother yeah because uh, like financially he's been supporting me with a lot of things by buying these things yeah and I owe it to him but like uh, what happened is that it's just changed my game a whole, whole nother level as I get better and better and I was more of a hobbyist in creating didn't think of you know charging people whatsoever yeah uh, and what happened is that like I did it uh, at, at a single gala yeah and they were like dude like you do this so fast like it's already been 10 and it was minutes. like ding <laughs> well it, it didn't come she then she asked how much do you charge it was like to be honest your fam like I, don't, I wouldn't charge like you got me this dance job already i'm already getting paid it's like well i'll pay you more on top of that with the film it's like well it's gonna be this much then how, that, and after that that would be like a good two years of just hobbying and playing around part-time which is why i understand it's a fine line yeah at the moment that time where uh a friend 
introduced me to a project, not really a project, a place called Invest Ottawa. Changed my mindset to be more professional. Okay. What it is that you got to have a business model. Uh, you can't avoid it. Write a piece of paper, write your business model, write your plan, write your structure, and take all that effort to make sure that you will be profitable. And then ever since then, August last year was my first register registration as a film. Yep. And my first client was the CFO Grey Cup. Yeah. Um, okay, but I really want to talk before I forget. Um, yeah. What really connected, I think, me to you or like understood is like I was really on that that speed, that talk about like efficiency pretty much in video editing, video production, the creative industry, how creating fast, creating bulk content. Cause you know, that's what I'm all about. That's, that's, I think that's what you said, how I caught your eyes. Cause I was putting so much out. Um, and that's pretty much what you took. Cause I haven't really seen any business models out there that are really about quantity over quality, even though you can have both, but you're really quantity, you know, quantity oriented, you know, I would say like yeah. 60, 40 kind of thing. Like obviously you, you still well said, you can still have both. Yeah. Like people think you, sh- you can't have both. You can still have both. It just takes practice. So, so that brings actually a very good segue because that's actually the business model. Yep. That's the biz- my business model. How did that come about? It's Was be- it from shooting so many dance videos that you're like, man, shooting quick is good. Like why, why did you think that you should go for quantity over quality? I went to LA. And I, I just shook my system because I met so many high level influencers. They're like, yeah, we create about like five stories a day and I make like two posts probably a day. I'm like, this is insane. Like that's 83. a lot of photos. <laughs> right? 83 a day, right? Yeah, 83 a day. Like, or not 83, I do three of posts a day. <laughs> right? And then you listen to Gary Vee, for example, and he redistributes and distributes oh like my hundreds God. of contents probably a day. And yeah. I, I like, I'm just making this up and like, Oh, he You're probably, asking, you know, he does a hundred contents a day. That's his, his tip is everyone should be doing a hundred contents a day. My, but, my, I've done 40. And the, and the scary thing is you'll probably only see two of them. It gives you an idea how, yeah. like how diluted the, the internet is in the sense of exactly. like, the content. Yeah. So like you have to be a quantity, uh, quant, uh, quantity based, uh, kind of business agent to get you to look at it. Yeah. But so uh, that, I took that model in and I was like, who actually needs this the most? And the first reaction is that is, is music artists. Because as a, as a dancer, I got to know a guy named Maurice Moore, who is extremely talented, yeah. and now lives in LA. Uh, and I had to create content for him, and I just realized, holy crap! Like, how could anyone who's an independent business could create a hundred content a day unless they have a team and they have people who are one believe in them and two have a budget? So I decided to structure a business where I could provide that to young artists because I've got songs on top 40 I know how it works I know content that would take uh, your your attention to that little page and funnel it yeah. obviously I use the word funnel a lot Yeah. and I went to a place called Live, uh, Live on Elgin which is like where live artists goes to and they yeah. perform and I watched the open mic see again indulge yourself Yeah. so I sat there and I watched and it's like so many good talent but lack of distribution of their content so I was like alright I, I think I have a business plan and then I came back and they were my first model. Really? You did it with artists first? Yep. It's actually primarily for artists. Yeah. Yeah, but then businesses, Started. unfortunately, they, they, they reached out because they want quantity too, with yeah. good quality. Everyone wants it. Yeah, and then they realize, wait, your price is this much? It's like, and they're able to afford it. And unfortunately, artists can't afford these prices. Yeah. Independent yeah. artists. They can't. You but, can't. But like, they can, but they just, that's a different whole type of story. We'll talk yeah. about that another time. Yeah, no, like people can record, they can afford it if they want it, really. Yeah. You can get anything you want if it's, yeah. do you really want it? Yeah, put the weed bag down, honestly. <laughs> that's straight up. Okay, let's talk um, quickly about, did you, some tips for people to avoid mistakes that you've done growing your business? What are some mistakes that you've, you've made oh the biggest one the biggest one is, is shoot your shot for something extremely high that's beyond your league okay uh, yeah so you're saying like be realistic like if you're a new business you go into a billionaire and asking him for 250 million dollars this is going a little too far okay dragon's sorry i'm gonna go back go back i'm gonna go back gonna dragon's go back. dead for those for those yeah well, yeah so <laughs> going back so basically um yeah i'm gonna revert back in the more uh, more uh, more uh, applicable level where people can understand it yeah um <laughs> it's good sometimes you just spit and everyone's like i don't know what you're talking I, about i get that <laughs> you I, have that you i'm have not that slang bro and the scary jargon, jargon. Slang. Yeah. <laughs> that jargon yeah and the scary thing is like even i myself was in a situation i was like i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and, and it was uh, not not you but like the people who are higher and like i respect oh yeah okay and then the, and then i sit there it's like okay and i'm taking this in i am not mentally your level yeah. that's probably the reason why i'm not 
actually in a position of class of where you are yeah. that's how I take it yeah. I'll, I'll be honest and it's like this is the reason why I don't drive the most expensive cars or have the house not saying that that's the, the, the metrics of yeah. it, but like it's just yeah it goes hand in it hand it relates almost. back it's what we were talking about earlier right? you gotta know you gotta know what the fuck you're talking about or else you're gonna be caught red handed and then you're just gonna look like the noob yeah. and you're gonna have less respect less credibility in the Absolutely. situation so that's the that's the one thing I'm trying to say is like, is that like it's like act your wage yeah. But try to be on, be more than your wage, and if you do, you have to go one level, just a notch higher, and then not learn. like a fucking <laughs> not a leap, not a leap. Like you could go ahead and hail Mary, but that's a leap. Uh, <laughs> but you will burn yourself, and you'll get really discouraged because uh, people who are you get punched um, in the face. Beyond that, they will even crush your soul. Yeah, yeah, just because they don't have time for your bullshit. Do you think it helps if you uh, get cr- punched in the face? You do, but like. And, 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 like, you talk about that, right? You say you gotta be smacked in the face. You gotta be, yeah. You gotta get your ass, like, you gotta get your ass beat. beat. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's that's how I put it uh, as a joke. So you got your, your face, your face punched a little bit, and and wake up, wake the fuck up, pretty yeah. much. But know where you are. But not, but not too much that like, like you get pushed away. Yeah. Imagine getting punched by Mike Tyson. If you know, some yeah. of you know who Mike Tyson is, yeah. uh, you die. But if you get punched by like you know like a local gym boxer who's a coach, like I think you would probably adequately survive. I think also it's a it's also a very mental thing though. It's like where you grew up, how much mental willpower you have. I think that's how much you can take a punch. It's not physically like they're not actually punching you in the face. No. But it's like mentally, like how much can you believe in yourself? Believe that you know you're in the right path, even though you get punched in the face. Be like, yo, I'm gonna stick it to these fuckers. Which is which is which is why I revert back marginally. Get to know people who are just a slight bit like better than you in a specific level that that's attainable. So like, uh, yeah, the, the don'ts is for sure is shoot your shot extremely so high that yeah. you get eaten alive. It's uh, it's not really the best thing. Okay, so um, we're gonna wrap it up slowly. Yeah. Um, go to camera setup, Ryan Tong. Camera setup. Go to the one you have right now. Explain it for the people. So first, people so know. Face people one. know how good of videos you can make with a. Go ahead, say it. <laughs> Fa- I would say phase one iPhone SE. Okay. Before that, even oh, we're that, going all the way back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Before that, uh, Galaxy Three. Galaxy Three. Now, most of my content was done in Galaxy Three. Do you sell videos of that? Uh, I'll look. At, yeah, I probably do. And if you if you have them, send them to me. Yeah, they got that, that got me free the children and we day iPhone 3 people Okay 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 uh, Not iPhone 3 uh, Galaxy 3 Yeah okay And then uh, the upgrade The upgrade is the Osmo The DJI Osmo Which is discontinued Oh you went to that Yeah Okay And then uh, Then you got I, an S Or a mirrorless And then I And I jacked uh, My sister's M3 mirrorless camera uh, Is what I used Yeah And it was a stock lens Okay And then after that I uh, was able to make enough money And I got uh, The Sony A7S uh, 35 millimeter Um cinema lens which is pure manual so there's no automatic 30, I've never seen you use that yeah because I it got broken did yes. you fix it yet? no it's that I went to the shop and they're like what happened it's like so, well someone oh, who has a cinema lens <laughs> yeah someone someone actually took a cart and they just didn't see me and it hit my lens I'm like actually, what happened and then I just it shook and I got myself the 50 millimeter <laughs> after and then I got myself the Tamron yeah the Tamron okay I don't like to talk about gear too much but what piece of gear do you think was the best investment for you? Osmo, you think? One hundred percent. It's just because like it was just first indispensable. Step, <laughs> indispensable. Especially, I think it's for your, your shooting style. Yeah, because okay. I'm hyperkinetic yeah. and it's wide and uh, it's a gimbal. So wide and stable. That's how Brian stable. likes that's, it. Yeah, that's how they like it too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Let's LOL. do. Let's let's do some. Uh, let's do some imagination. What is your dream setup now? What dream. What are you going for? <laughs> Everything. Do you talk there about is. this. <laughs> I do because like I want to. Okay, talk open. about everything there is. Explain your your dream. You've told me about this. Yeah, I want like well, no, not dream like company or whatever. I would have for myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I definitely want to have like an office where like I can open up and there's every lens possible for all my shooters to kind of use to yeah. get the project done. Yeah, for sure. Right, even small cameras, mirrorless cameras, big cameras. Like I want a whole inventory. The whole reason is because it's about being diversified in different markets. Yeah, and having a team that's actually understanding the ideas of different styles of shooting yeah yeah sure you go ahead and just shoot documentary but i don't want you in my team because of that because i want you to be diverse uh i want you to be understand and always explore different areas yeah yes be a niche in one thing but go <laughs> ahead okay go ahead i was, I was about to ask you that because you were talking about you wanted to be niche earlier but then you also want them you want them to take in different yes different uh art yeah but be and turn it into their art yeah okay 
Um, top five influencers who have influenced you, either through media or personally, if you know them. Uh, specifically I, in photo and videography? Yeah, please. Uh, for me... Or you, know, you can say, like, in general. Just... Yeah, no, yeah okay. Anything. No. It could be mental, too. It could be dance. I don't care. Yeah, no, dance is a different story. It's dance is a different story. I would say, yeah, if it had anyone avoid. mentally, anyone like Gary V or, like, you know, these people who, like, elevate well, definitely your mindset. Gar- Gary V is definitely the later one, for sure. Okay. Uh, the first one is definitely uh, Steven Spielberg, because, like, I watch a lot of his movies. I yep. didn't realize I like and love his movies. So, yep. from Land Before Time and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm a huge, uh, even though not, it's a weird... Uh, kind of like inspiration but I don't like his stuff a lot uh, I'm not a fan of his style but Tim Burton but I respect it so like I take that into consideration when I do my art which is yeah. kind of funny uh, because I watched Batman when Tim Burton did it if I remember Tim Burton did it and I was like man like that impacted me as a kid um, so okay and, yeah and then the anyone third, else or no oh man there, yeah for sure there's uh, Tony Robbins <laughs> I don't even know Tony Robbins <laughs> Well, like, I know him, but he's like, the guy who hypes you up. Not even close. <laughs> like he, he watches YouTube videos. Like, go in the morning, go nah, into the mirror, nah. and say you can do it. Nah. And say that for five minutes straight, and you'll be the most powerful creature nah, in the nah. world. No, I think Diddy, Pup Daddy, <laughs> oh, really? uh, is is definitely my influence. Because music? Anyone in music then? Yeah, that's Diddy. Diddy yeah, Diddy. Anyone yeah. else? Uh, the reason why because he's like a boss like he doesn't think anything less and he has an empire like the moment I saw him in New York City with his own billboard with his hands up with Sean John Sean John is his clothing label for those who are not very familiar either Um, it's his face in New York Manhattan man yeah a black man that just made out of Harlem with his face like he's a boss yeah so I I wanted to be him Um, in terms of like music I guess Dr. Dre for sure okay yeah, and there's a few others here and there, but I, I okay, it, no, no, that's that's yeah. good, perfect. Okay, and wrapping it up, future of Brian Tong. Anything you want to let the people know? Uh, link your Instagram now. Is your time? Link your website. Uh, yes, or w- your website's coming up soon, right? Not now. really. It's it's there. I just oh, have it's multiple there? businesses. That's all. <laughs> the first one is actually www.whatsgoodbeatong.com. Yeah, you guys should catch me at info at whatsgoodbeatong.com, and you can always catch me at Instagram. I guess what. <laughs> He does the voices. That's right. <laughs> <at> what's good? <laughs> Beatong.com. <laughs> Anything you want to let the people know before we uh, sign off? Uh, don't be afraid. Keep jumping. Indulge. Always feel free to ask the questions. I'm always open. And uh, I hope you actually stay creative, stay beautiful, because there's nothing to lose at this point because you're living and breathing. Thank you guys for listening. This has been Dax Relay with Shudder Talk. See you guys in the next one.